Hello everyone and welcome back to our second weekly video to human allies. So today we're going to study the connection between humans and animals to understand common traits and behaviors. And at the same time, we're going to compare and contrast the behavior of animals with the human behavior to identify similarities and influences. As we're going to examine the importance of recurrent language through a lot of introductory texts, we're going to examine the different, basically, various devices and uh, the expression of complex ideas, emotions, and concepts using figurative language. So generally speaking, it is a form of expression in which uh, words deviate from their literal meaning to convey a more rich, vivid, and imaginative message. It includes a lot of devices that add you know, depth and creativity, and at the end, emotional impact, language, and communication. So, moving on to the uh, author's choice of words, she when using synonyms and antonyms a lot in her uh, works that would actually add the balance and enrich the vocabulary that helps her to express ideas, emotions, and a lot of descriptions. Um, now, so we're going to go through a challenging question that is how do synonyms and antonyms change over time as language evolves and what factors contribute to these shifts? And when it comes to action and linking words, we're going to differentiate between both of them in regard to sentence structure and recognize how verbs are essential components of sentence structure, including subject, predicates, and complements. So um, action verbs actually play a very important role in determining the action or state of being in the sentence. They help to, you know, convey what the subject is doing and you know, which is essential for constructing a clear and a dynamic sentence. Action verbs are integral for forming complete predicates. That, is, that are basically meaningful. However, when it comes to linking basically verbs, on the other hand, they serve connectors between subject and its description or even state. They are very essential for creating subject complements which uh, provide additional information about the subject itself, um, such as uh, basically identities. Linking words and verbs are crucial for subject-verb agreement as they don't show action, but rather they equip the subject with its description. Now moving on to creditors by Linda Hogan. So today we're going to develop a deeper understanding of the main ideas um, and shared thoughts of the poem itself. And we're going to explore the background of the author in alignment with the type of the text we're dealing with. Now to start off with Linda Hogan, she's an American poet, novelist, and environmentalist. Again, her works often explore themes that are related to nature, indigenous cultures, and the environment. Hogan is celebrated um, for her poetic and thought-provoking writing that sheds light on the interconnectedness of all living things and the importance of environmental conservation. So, and we're going to have a, um, a scavenger hunt practice that we're going to read for just a dynamic and interactive, uh, basically, parts of the text itself in order for us to um, get the overall idea of the text. Now we're going to highlight the concept of vocabulary that Hogan is highlighting, uh, in which it shows that the beauty and the violence can coexist in a world or in the animal kingdom or in the world, generally speaking, that shows, again, and highlights the brutal realities of life as human beings. So we're going, again, to skim through the poem to grasp the fundamental essence of it, and we're going to highlight the use of words and the choice of words, diction, um, in, and in relation to the style of writing that is so we're going to comprehend the distinction between or the difference between denotation and connotation. So again, denotation refers to the literal or primary meaning of a word itself. So we're talking about the literal meaning and the definition you have find in the dictionary, the precise and objective meaning again um, of the word itself we're dealing with. However, when, whenever we're talking with connotation, we're talking about, on the other hand, something that has to do beyond the literal meaning. It includes additional association, emotions, cultural interpretations that actually the word carries by itself. And um, again, we're going to eventually end up with a challenging question that is explore the idea of the word a neutral connotations. And can you identify words that are less likely to carry strong emotional or cultural associations.